And with Blade Runner, perhaps the question has always been, is Deckard a replicant? Now, I myself, having already researched this, I'm a little bit more indifferent about it, but we're going to use this as a kind of case study of how commentators and people on YouTube have responded to this. So on the one side, we have Robert Meyer Burnett, who's a director, editor. He's worked in Hollywood for decades. He's a big Star Trek person, and he does a YouTube channel, which is very popular and tries to unite various parts of the fandom. But on this particular question, he's been very, very vocal and hostile against other commentators, including Overlord and Captain Spock. Although I'm very critical of Overlord, I actually like Captain Spock, and I'm actually agreeing with him on this question. Not because of favoritism, but because my own research and looking into it, I agree with the consensus that Deckard is a replicant. Ridley Scott says he's a replicant. The script says he's a replicant. Symbolism in the film says he's a replicant. A really good book on Blade Runner that's very large. It's a huge book, but it's very well researched. Also agrees he's a replicant. Again, because there are so many different versions of Blade Runner, it's going to always be a hot top. We're going to hear a short excerpt of Overlord making his case. I also want to get to Spock. He also makes his own case about this question. We're going to hear Overlord and dissect what he says, and then we're going to move on to the Robert Burnett crisis or controversy. But it is the director who interprets and shapes the script into the film that he wants to make. It is very clear and thoroughly documented that Ridley Scott says Deckard is a replicant. He was from the beginning, and the unicorn shot was the dead giveaway all along. But regardless of the fact that Deckard is human in Dick's novel, and regardless of the fact that Fancher rejects the notion that Deckard is a replicant, the fact of the matter is not only does the director say Deckard is a replicant, but Fancher did too. In a draft of the script from 1981, Fancher and Peoples explicitly state that Deckard is a replicant at the end of the script in a voiceover. Here is the scene. Deckard notices it. His eyes narrow just a little. He reaches in his pocket, pulls out the unicorn. Deckard puts the tinfoil unicorn on the dash. A flicker of a smile crosses his face. Cut to exterior woods day. Deckard's car bullets through the woods in a fury of speed and music. We back off it and up, past whizzing branches, over the treetops, losing the car as we soar over what is suddenly a vast forest spreading to infinity. Enormous music. Deckard's voice over. I knew it on the roof that night. We were brothers, Roy Batty and I. Combat models of the highest order. We'd fought in wars not yet dreamed of, in vast nightmares still unnamed. We were the new people. Roy and me and Rachel. We were made for this world. It was ours. Trees explode past us in a rage of branches as we dip and swerve and that's when the spinner looms into view, zooming right at us, then tilting and yawing off in hot pursuit with Gaff at the controls. Credits are rolling. God help us all. Fade out. The end. Now this draft was by Hampton Fancher and David Peoples, dated February 23rd, 1981. So at this point, we've established beyond dispute that Ridley Scott not only intended to have the Deckard Unicorn memory linkage to the Origami Unicorn, with a clear message being, Gaff had seen Deckard's file and knew his inmost thoughts, but Scott even had the writers include this explicitly in the script at one point. All right, so now I want to just preface that Overlord earlier in the video tries to appeal to auteur theory, namely that Ridley Scott is the author of Blade Runner, and we should go to his intentions in terms of what he wanted. But he provides pretty strong evidence from the script. Again, not the script we see filmed, but the original, original script did have a voiceover where Deckard says, I'm a replicant. That's what I am. Still going back, that is pretty definitive evidence. I would say only this, that Overlord is a little bit inconsistent because usually when we say auteur, the auteur usually writes and directs the script. Now, you can be an auteur who only directs, like Hitchcock. Even though other people wrote for him, there's really no doubt he was in full control. But uh, Ridley Scott's a little bit weird, so him appealing to both Ridley Scott as an auteur and the script is a little bit contradictory, so that part was a little wonky. But overall, yeah, he made a very strong case. It's a very, very long essay, but overall... I think it was fair-minded, and he's not too polemical. Again, this is separate from 
a lot of his videos where he gets into rumors and Brie Larson and Star Wars. But this commentary was very well done. It's very well argued. And I think he makes his point very succinctly and very intelligently. And it lines up with what me and Spock have been saying on this issue as well, that, yeah, he is a replicant. Now, I just want to explain Rob's point of view before we close out, because apparently to him, Deckard needs to be human, because otherwise the story is too pessimistic or nihilistic. And people who disagree with him are a bunch of hipsters and nihilists or whatever. I don't quite understand why he's framing it like that or why people who oppose him are hipsters. I don't quite understand. Spock's made fun of him a lot in his tweets by polarizing people into hipsters and non-hipsters. I don't even know what he means by hipster. He just seems to use the word hipster as a kind of insult. I guess I'll take being a hipster, I guess. But I guess for him... We lose some of the humanism in the story if Deckard is a replicant. And Harrison Ford is on record that he also thinks that Deckard's human. But he and Ridley Scott did not get along in Blade Runner. They had a lot of issues between them. So he's kind of a tainted source. Now, I may agree with Rob that if we do turn Deckard into a replicant, canonically, it's going to make the story V very pessimistic and very dark. And But so what? That's the story. That's the story Ridley Scott wanted to tell. If you want a more optimistic story, then rent Rise of Skywalker. That is a very big fruitcake, happy ending with all smiles. Some stories are going to be very sad and very pessimistic. That's just how they are. If you don't like those kinds of stories, go to another kind of story. But this is the story that Ridley Scott wanted to make. And if it's too depressing for you, well, too bad. There are other stories that await you. So to me, this is kind of a, he's creating a non-traversy because the evidence is so overwhelming that he is a replicant. But you can hold the non-replicant thesis. I just don't see why you want to do it dogmatically. I think maybe there's enough evidence for Deckard being a human, but that it has to be, that he has to be human, is just really strange. And calling people hipsters who don't agree with you is really, really bizarre. But we'll get more into it with Spock weighing in on the controversy. But I think, yeah, I think uh, Overlord, you know, his usual stuff is a little extreme and ridiculous for me. But yeah, this is very moderate, and I think he proved his case pretty thoroughly. Thank you for listening.